So happy to be chatting today with Julie Malozzi of the Quincy Climate Action Network, or QCAN, as we've come to know it here in Quincy, to chat about an upcoming presentation uh, with the Thomas Crane Public Library regarding heat pumps uh, this month. So hi, Julie. Happy New Year. Hi, Happy New Year to you. Thank you so much. Great to be uh, catching up with you again. It's been a little while since we talked about uh, QCAN. Maybe we should do a little refresher for folks who aren't familiar with what uh, the group is. Yeah, so uh, Quincy Climate Action Network is a, is a local group, and we work to fight climate change uh, by promoting climate-friendly practices among residents, businesses, and government. Um, so, you know, the idea is that uh, climate change is an issue that is really global, obviously affects the entire world, but we can make a lot of changes right in our own households and neighborhoods um, that really do make a difference. About how long has the organization been around now, Julie? Um, that is a good idea. I'm not one of the original founders, but I think it's been about 10, 10 or 12 years. Uh, don't quote me on that. <laughs> now, it's been several years, at least, I know, um, for sure. Can you talk maybe a little bit about some of your uh, your past accomplishments, past projects, if you would? Sure. Um, well, one of the original sort of founding um, projects of Quincy, of, of QCAN was when there was a Honeywell settlement and the Honeywell company had to pay out to the city of Quincy and uh, QCAN lobbied hard to use the funds to create uh, the position of energy manager, uh, which Shelley Dean now occupies. And that has been a wonderful position of a person who's in charge of, you know, reducing the city's energy consumption in whatever way possible, which is obviously so great, both in terms of finances and in terms of climate, climate impact. And I I believe that uh, Shelley has saved, saved her own salary, you know, many times over. Well, again, don't quote me on the exact facts, but the, you know, the position working um, saves itself by um, energy efficiency. So, and, and we work with uh, uh, Shelley when we can on, on projects. Um, so, um, so that's been one thing. And another thing was that the Solarize Quincy, this is all before I joined QCAN, but um, QCAN was one of the partners in helping promote solarization on people's homes. Um, and I think in collaborating with the government to try to um, get solar panels on the roofs of all the schools, which is amazing um, that we have that. Um, I, I believe, you know, a good portion of our municipal energy comes from the solar panels there. Um, and one of the projects that we've been working on lately um, was that is in process and hopefully we'll be launching publicly in the next year or so. Um, is the Quincy Community Electricity. Um, so QCAN helped uh, promote the idea of Quincy looking into um, what's called green or called municipal aggregation where the city kind of bulk buys electricity. So we get a better price because we're bulk buying it for everybody and sort of we, everybody's by default added to this program and can then opt out if they don't wanna join the program. But why would you opt out when the electricity is cheaper? And um, at the same time, it's a higher percentage of renewable electricity. So it's both greener and cheaper uh, for everyone. So that will be coming online once it gets through. Hopefully it will get through all of the approvals and you'll be hearing more from the city and from us about that. So that's the kind of project we're doing that, you know, trying to make small systemic changes that end up making a pretty big impact. Sure. So uh, how many members of the network are there, Julie? Who, who are you folks? Uh, what, what's your backgrounds? Um, well, uh, you know, it's, we're a small, small but mighty group. I think we only have some 30 some members at the moment. And then we have, you know, hundreds of people who are on our mailing list um, who kind of participate in smaller ways. Um, we're always open to new members or even, you know, you, there's no real, um, it's not really complicated to become a member. You can just show up at a meeting. Uh, we have sort of voluntary dues that are, I think, like $30 a year or something, but it's, sliding scale, you can pay nothing and just declare that you'd like to become a member or you can donate more if you'd like to. Um, we, we meet once a month um, on the second Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m. We've been doing Zoom for a while um, and we were planning to go back to in person, but now we sort of delayed that. Um, so we have a website, quincycan.org, and anyone could go to the website. You can see how to get to the Zoom meetings and just show up. We always introduce ourselves at the beginning and um, you know, we come from many different backgrounds, always trying to expand to different communities as well, uh, you know, different demographics and different types of folks. Sure. When did, did you get involved and, and why? why? Um, I got involved about four, three or four years ago, I would say. Um, 
I think it was uh, probably around the time that Trump was elected. Uh, and I think a lot of people joined around then just worrying that the federal government may not be doing too much for four years about this like emergency crisis issue. Um, and it, we did see a big uh, bump in membership then. Um, and I just really enjoy the, first of all, satisfaction of like that I can do something that with just a few hours a month, I can actually move the needle and reduce, you know, if I can put on this event and, and convince uh, some people that heat pumps are the way to go, that's like, not only could I do that in my own home, but I, you know, can maximize my impact. So that's been very satisfying. It kind of helps um, relieve some of the anxiety or depression around the climate emergency. Um, and then also it's a wonderful group of people. And I've met a whole bunch of friends and neighbors. There's several members who live within like a five minute walk of me. We go walk together. We do the Quincy uh, Greener Cleaner Quincy together. And we have potluck dinners once a year. And, um, you know, it's just a, it's a fun way to meet people of all, all ages. There's even a youth um, arm of Quincy now. So there's um, teenagers up to 80 year olds, basically. So do you have to have kind of an environmental background, would you say, or, or no? Oh, not at all. Not at all. I would say there is, you know, there is a core group of people who are sort of, you know, science writers and science, environmental scientists by background, but um, there's lots of people who aren't at all. And I actually think it, it strengthens us when we have people from more different backgrounds. Um, to me, there's so many ways to kind of get at the climate issue, um, you know, besides the science angle or the, you know, activism angle, there's, you know, faith-based angle, of, you know, this is God's creation, one could say and we, you know we don't want to destroy it and um you know one could get at it from an emotional angle of trying to uh that you know we want to or that you or the grandchildren or children angle that you want to make the world a habitable place for the next generation so um, and i think ha all kinds of skills are useful we have someone who's an artist she makes beautiful paintings and every now and then her her work will be featured in one of our events and um you know so all kinds of skills and backgrounds are, mm -hmm. are great yeah, what's your professional background? Uh, I'm a documentary filmmaker, so um, I often tend to do like I take care of the video stuff when we're when we have our candidates forum every year, or every two years rather, an election time. Um, I'm always the one who sort of arranges for the our videotape it and cut the videos together. Um, I kind of um, handle the oversee the newsletter we send out a few times a year, and many members write pieces and we edit each other's work and stuff. But I kind of put it together. So I sort of do the communication stuff. Okay. I was on the board for uh, three years, but I just this year I've um, stepped off the board, you know, to just to make sure we have rotating leadership. Sure. Yeah. Who, so there is a governmental structure. Uh, who, who is the president? Uh, well, actually, we've moved from the notion of a pro we had for years. There was a board with a chair. But um, a, a couple of years, about a year ago, we moved to a more collaborative uh, non-hierarchical structure. So there's a board of five people who are all sort of equal okay. and works on a consensus principle. So all major decisions need to be um, agreed upon um, by consensus. And it's it's been fun to just even that like learning the learning experience of how do you how do you do a consensus organization and how do you know there's there's a structure there's a kind of procedure for how you come to an agreement on something. Um, so yeah. When you do meet in person, Julie, where do you meet? Um, we've been meeting at the, um, I forget the name of the church right, right here um, on, uh, on, on Beach Street. I think it's on Beach. It's like three blocks from my house. I don't even know. It's on the website, uh, but it's near Wollaston. It's, you know, within a few blocks of Hancock uh, Street in Wollaston. Uh, it's just a church basement. Okay, very good. So you mentioned uh, the heat pump program. Uh, this is going to be, uh, let's see, January 19th. Uh, 7 p.m. What's going on? Um, yeah, we're, I'm really excited about this um, because, again, this is the kind of change that we can make individually in our lives that can make a huge difference in terms of our carbon impact. And, you know, carbon being one of the main uh, greenhouse gases that is heating up our planet or, or not just heating it up, but, you know, changing the climate. We've all seen the effects of this, uh, you know, even just local weather. We've seen how, how warm this winter was. This year was the second warmest year in Massachusetts in, on, in record. Uh, they've been keeping records for, I think, 150 or 175 years. And the second warmest year was a few years ago, you know, so we can even feel it. And, uh, and that's kind of alarming because minor changes in temperature, obviously, are quite devastating for the ecosystem. Um, so we are putting on an event called Heat Pumps 101. Um, and heat pump, an electric heat pump is, a, is an option for how to heat your home. Um, most people in, in Quincy heat their homes either through oil or gas right now. Um, but 
uh, those are both fossil fuels that produce carbon and other greenhouse gases. Uh, so it's uh, really can be great to switch to an electric source of energy for your heating, which you can then, if you can source the electricity sustainably through wind or solar or some other means, then you could actually become a zero emission uh, household in terms of your heating and cooling, by the way, because that is the other great benefit about heat pumps, unlike oil and gas heating, is they serve as air conditioners in the summer and our summers are getting hotter and hotter here. So, um, so, so our thought was let's have a heat pump 101. A lot of us, including myself, don't even know that much about heat pumps, but you know, we're going to have some experts come and uh, give us the, the lowdown on how they work, uh, what they cost, what different types there are, and um, and what kind of incentives, government incentives there are to help pay for it. Okay, yeah, no, at least year, I know years past, um, heat pumps were not practical in, in colder regions like here in New England, but has that changed? Yes, the technology has advanced a lot in the last uh, few years. That was my own personal worry. I, I had heard that, oh, they don't work under a certain temperature, and um, and then you're cold, you know, and I think things have advanced a lot and there's different types. Um, I think some have, an, some have an inverter or other. I'm not, again, I'm not an expert on the, um, the heat pump technology. That's why we're having folks come in. But I, my understanding is that now there are types that really can work to quite cold temperatures. Um, and some people also keep their old system as a backup, depending on which type of heat pump they get. Um, but they, yeah, and we're going to have actually uh, one of the speakers is a Quincy homeowner who has installed two heat pumps. So we'll hear from the lay person of how their house feels uh, and, and how they feel about the decision. Okay. So talk about that actual night again, January 19th, 7 p.m. How does it all work, Julie? Um, well, we're, it's, a, it's a collaborative event. It's co-hosted by the Thomas Crane Public Library, and it will be, um, it'll be a Zoom event, virtual Um so all you need to do to join, there's several ways to, to join into the event. You can um, go onto the Zoom link that's, um, uh, you know, that's being circulated. Um, you can watch it on YouTube live through the library channel. You can even phone in if, you, if you're in the car and you just want to listen. Um, there's a phone number. Um, so um, the event is, if you go to the library's website, that's one way to get it, uh, to get the links. Um, we, let's see, I'm trying to think of the best way. I think on the QCAM website, maybe I should put, I haven't done this yet, actually. I've been waiting for the, all the translations and things, but I can put on the Quincy, um, dot can, Quincy can website on the front page, I'll put a link to. And we have a created like an event bright where people can RSVP and then they'll get the link also emailed to them as a reminder. Um, so yeah, so it's very easy. It starts at 7 p.m. You can sit in your living room, you can mute your videos and no one has to see you and just sit back and, and listen or watch. Okay, and will it be interactive? Will folks be able to ask questions? Yep, yeah, so we'll have several um, speakers and, and they'll cover different aspects of it and then there'll be a Q&A. Um, so the speakers include, um, well, I'll be facilitating them from QCAN and then we'll have um, a representative from the Green Energy Consumers Alliance um, and we'll have a representative from ICF, which is a, sort of a program implementer um, that works with MassSAVE to uh, kind of implement some of the incentive programs they have. Um, and then we'll have John Gorey, who's a, um, a QCAN member and a homeowner who's not only installed a heat pump himself, but he's a writer for the Boston Globe and has researched and written an article about heat pumps. And uh, actually he wrote a blog post on our website about heat pumps, which is up there now. Um, yeah, and so they'll, they'll you know talk through the different sort of types of heat pumps, the environmental benefits, the cost um, incentive programs, the personal experience, uh, of what it's what it looks and feels like, um, an installation process, uh, how you know how to step by step go about it, and then we'll have Q and A basically. So it'll be about an hour and a half total. Okay, and you mentioned uh, translation, so it'll be in other languages also. Yep. So people can go to the um, Eventbrite and RSVP, and they can request. Actually, they can also just send an email if they want to request a translator. We're working by request only because we obviously don't want to like set it all up if no one needs it, but we're, we're, we're set up to do um, Mandarin or Cantonese translation. Um, if there's a, a, enough people requesting Portuguese, we could potentially do Portuguese as well. But um, yeah, so uh, we'd love to have people from all the, obviously everyone in Massachusetts needs heating. So um, we're really excited to be able to offer um, a bilingual program. Yeah, well, that's a good point actually. Um, to be a member of QCAN, do you have to be a Quincy resident? 
No, not at all. We have some residents who are um, in neighboring towns. Um, you know, this is an issue that's global. So um, it's in a way we're working locally. So most of our work is as far as businesses and, and government, it's with the city of Quincy. But we do collaborate, for example, with a lot of people in Weymouth around the Four River uh, compressor station. Uh, so we work with the folks there and, you know, sometimes we'll work with, um, we'll participate in sort of Boston wide events, but most of our members are in Quincy, I would say, but that's definitely not a requirement. Sure. So do you have any goal, Julie, for uh, how many heat pumps you'd like to, you know, people to convert to? Well, that's a good, a good question. You know, just this last night, a neighbor of mine happened to text me about uh, converting uh, to gas a heat. And I said, well, have you considered a heat pump, you know? And uh, so I, I don't know. And, and we're looking into it too for the next a few years. So, I don't know, let's say 10. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, it's got to start yeah, somewhere, right? Yep, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, 10 is a, a year of, of uh, you know, every year, it's a year long, because it's not just like uh, a one-time thing, I guess. It's ongoing, and, you know, a heating system lasts for decades, so mm -hmm. it's a multiplier effect. Sure. I mean, I'm hoping more people will come to the event. I'm hoping we'll get dozens and dozens of people at the event, but not everyone needs, you know, you only need a new heating system now and then, so... Right. Let's say if we can get 10 people in the next uh, year to switch over, that would be wonderful. Yeah, you know, I think uh, if there are incentives, government incentives or subsidies, uh, folks would be interested in hearing about those for sure. Anything else you'd like to let folks know about right now? Oh, um, I, I think that's it. No, thank you so much for, for having me. Oh, no, it's our pleasure. Again, if you could give out the uh, the net website for QCAN. Sure, it's... Uh, it's quincycan.org. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I'll put up a, um, an announcement about the event and the link. And it's also on the, the Thomas Crane Library's website, event, their event page. Okay, which is simply thomascranelibrary.org. Thanks so much, Julie. Great to chat with you. Yeah, thank you. You're very welcome. Have a great event. Thank you. Thank you.